This is an All Sports Station production. Tonight, from Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles taking on Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. We're just a stone's throw from the Delaware River. We've got some water to contend with ourselves. A steady rain falling at Lincoln Financial Field. Just a short time ago, these Philly fans in full roar as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. Pyrotechnics ablaze. They're set to go as their Eagles will match up with the Seattle Seahawks. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. Out now comes Russell Wilson in season number nine, six-time Pro Bowler as he gets set to lead this Seahawks offense. Whenever you think about the Seattle Seahawks, one of the first things that pops to mind is how well they run the football and how much they like doing it. But you have to also look at how well Russell Wilson has played at the quarterback spot. Hasn't just been a game manager. Last year, over 4,100 yards passing, the second most in his career. 31 touchdown passes and took care of the ball as well because he threw just five interceptions. If you need to open things up, Russell Wilson can get it done. Now Wilson on first down. Out to the right, he gets it to lock it. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Here's a second and two now from the 33. First carry for Carlos Hyde. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Now the Seahawks and Eagles, you might remember, they met up in the wild card round a season ago. It's a night Philly fans could probably stand to forget. Carson Wentz exited early after just four passes thrown, and Josh McCown at 40 years of age brought in, but the Seahawks, they were too tough as they slugged out a 17-9 victory. And complete here to Carlos Hyde. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Excellent play there on third down, give him 25 yards. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up, 
They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Wilson flushed out right. And now he's going to use his legs. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. You know, I don't think this is the last time we'll see that in this game. This guy has mobility, and they want to use his legs in the game plan. So there will be designed runs as well as his scrambles. Solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. On second down, Hyde. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. They've taken this opening kickoff and marched it right down the field defensively. Not much resistance. And that's the point, because my admiration is for the guys moving the ball right now. They know what they're doing. Their plan is working. But I flip it over and watch and say, okay, what are you going to do to change things up? Because if you don't, they're going to put that ball in the end zone real soon. Now they'll throw it with Wilson out to his left. He's going to take off with it. Give him nine on the scramble there, and it'll leave him with a second in just a couple of inches. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Hyde is the lone man in the backfield here on second and goal. Wilson. And he will not get away. He's sacked back around the three-yard line. A sack by Brandon Graham. He's been doing that since he entered the league in 2010. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Out of the gun. Here's Wilson. This will be caught at about the five. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Myers' kick is good. And the Seahawks grab a 3 nothing lead. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, it kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. 
And this will make it into the end zone. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Out come the Eagles for their first drive, led out by their quarterback in his fifth year in Philly, Carson Wentz. And when I think of Carson Wentz in his first four years in the league, I kind of look at him as bookends because his first year as a rookie, he started all 16 games. The next two years, beset by injuries. But last year, started all 16 in the regular season again and was very productive. His first 4,000-yard campaign throwing the ball, 27 touchdowns and only seven interceptions. The injuries got him again in the wild card game, but when he's on the field, his team is dangerous. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll set up to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Miles Sanders out of the backfield. And now it's second down. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They will run for the first time with Miles Sanders. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. On second down, it's Sanders. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. And he will not get there as they stop him short right around the 34-yard line. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. So opening drive, three straight runs, unable to pick up the first. I know the fans want to see first downs, but guess what? The coaches have reasons for what they're doing. Sometimes they've scripted it, and some of these runs, while they haven't been successful now, they may be successful later on. On fourth down, out is the putter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. The Seahawks have David Moore back deep. This will be fielded at the 17. It's a 47-yard punt, but they did give up 10 on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Hyde as they begin on the ground. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Two yards the loss, second and 12. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. From the gun, it's Wilson. And got his man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, 
he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. He takes it down to the 42, a five-yard run. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Play action. It's Wilson. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. From the shotgun, Wilson. He can run for it, and he will. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. And, partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So back onto the field. Here come the Eagles for their second drive. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and out. And now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 21. A gain of three, second down. That was a particularly nice play because not only was it his job to force the play inside, he was actually able to fold inside himself and make the tackle ultimately. Very nicely done. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Wentz on the draw leaves it for Sanders. And yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. From the gun, it's Wentz. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Jaron Reed in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. And that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. Led to a sack, and that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. <laughs> 51 yards on the punt there. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Come 
Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at the 34. They start the drive with high. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 25 yards the pick up there and also a first down. Now they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 41. From the gun, Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now high. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Well, let's face it, that's just a helpless feeling for a running back there. He's looking up to find a hole, and all he finds is a whole lot of ticked-off linebacker. defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Operating from the gun, Wilson. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 43. He'll start with a handoff to Sanders. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know that, that type of result on each and every attempt. from just shy of midfield. Wentz. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Trey Flowers picks it. There he goes, left side. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Ah, oh, yes, the old tip drill works to perfection there. Ah, oh, you're bringing back great memories. You used to love that drill. And a lot of times in practice, you work on it not just one tip, but multiple tips, just in case the ball stays in the air for a while, to have an awareness and the ability to go up and grab it. And then you want to get some blocking support and end up in the opposite end zone. In that tip drill, do you what do you yell? 
Uh, for, for, for us, it was Oski. Okay, Oski was an interception. For different teams. Different teams have different ways of doing it. I've heard bingo, jackpot. The worst I ever heard, though, was Frankenstein. You don't want it to be a three-syllable word. Too many syllables, words. yeah. You want, you want to get it right down and go. Oski is really the preferred word. Oski. Jason Myers now for the extra point. Footing likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be fielded inside the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. This will probably be the last play of the quarter. They start on the ground here at Sanders. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 10-0 to score after one on EA Sports. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll run it, Sanders. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. From the 41, Wentz, that'll be caught. Rager with it. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard for them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Throwing on first is Wentz. Left side here to Sanders. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Sanders toss left side. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Seahawks 38. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. On first and ten, here's Wentz. And his throw is incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. They work again from the 38 on second and ten. Mike 50. Mike 50. 
Throwing now is Wentz. And he'll complete this one to Fulgham. And he gets it down to the 32. Five yards. Now it's third and five. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. 56. Mike, 56. We're done. 56. We're done. On the draw, here's Sanders. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. A nice first down pickup on a gain of six. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll run with Sanders. Down to the 25. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Boston Scott, his first carry. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. The Eagles on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Shotgun now for Wentz. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be fourth down. That's a nice clip and save sequence there defensively because they did everything as they would have wanted to. They forced the third down. Blanketed the field with coverage, nowhere to go with the football, forced the dump off to the back, and even then they closed quickly and got him down behind the line of scrimmage. You name it, they did it well in that last sequence. So on comes the Eagle kicker, Jake Elliott, on fourth down. first and keep possession. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They go back to the ground with Sanders. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Bobby Wagner, the NFL's leading tackler in 2019, there on the stop. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. And they'll lose yardage here, knocked back to the 19-yard line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. The Eagles on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third down and 12. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Jaron Reed, his second sack of the night. It's a team game, but sometimes individuals do stand out, don't they? How about that for a twofer? Tackle for a loss on the running play on the previous down, and then comes right back and gets a sack.
Now to try the Eagle field goal, Jake Elliott. From the right hash, it's a 41-yard attempt. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So you're a boxing guy. How do you score that on your boxing card? A very long drive with three points. And I really want to do my boxing analyst voice right here. But I'm going to keep it normal for us, right? I call it a drive. That type of a drive has to feel good, right? You take it all the way down, feel you control the ball, control the car. But then we got three points out of it. So defensively, it could have been worse, right? So I give it a draw. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Now Carlos Hyde gears up to take the field again. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who've been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys <laughs> on the other side of the football, and they've moved them out of the way for the runner. Sometimes that's tough for those big fellas. Not an easy thing for them to do. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 27. Hi. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Got it here at the 29 on second and eight. From the gun, Wilson. And now he'll tuck it and run. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. They go play action with Wilson. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Come on now, let's make it happen, baby. Let's make it happen. It's and Brandon, the passing game for both of these teams is going to be affected as the game goes along. It's not looking like the rain's going to let up anytime soon. So that might mean a few more wobbly passes and wide receiver slips. And this one winds up getting intercepted. Now back to work for Miles Sanders in the Philly offense. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Here's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. No, oh, bottled up, fumble. It's out, it's loose. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. 
All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys who have to touch the ball and carry it, they're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here <laughs> as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. recovery it's Wilson open man is Jacob Hollister and he's going to get this inside the 30 that one good for 14 and a Seahawk first good strong throw and catch right there and so far in this game the alleys have been open for them to get completions and they're taking advantage of it off the play fake here's Wilson rolling to his right now he'll pull it down, and he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and 10, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. <laughs> Throwing again on second down. Wilson, they go screen pass to Hyde. And out of bounds right around the 20. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. And the Seahawks on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. Here it's third and three. Operating from the gun. Wilson. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Wilson to Metcalf that time. First down, Seattle. So how would you describe that one, partner? Workmanlike right there, getting that first down, blue-collar type football? Yeah, only needed three, got four, just enough. I like workmanlike. I think it's pretty cool myself. Everything doesn't have to be high glamour in this game. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Our score, 10 to three with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. That's Derek Barnett coming in and making the play. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. So after the sack, here's second and 14. From the gun, Wilson rolling to his left. He'll try and run it, and he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. A nice job of eluding the pressure there, scrambling for 11. I thought they were going to sack him there like they did on first down. Great coverage, but he found a way to move with his legs. Yeah, his ability to take off. Not only did he get some yardage back, he got a little bit extra Really helps him on third down, makes it manageable now. The 10th carry for Hyde. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. They'll run for it with Hyde. 
And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. And what I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half. And now to give us momentum going into the second half, give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. The extra point now coming from Myers. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. So that drive goes eight plays, and it was capped off by a Carlos Hyde touchdown run. For the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Taken about seven yards deep, and he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Philadelphia's offense ready to give us another look. And this not an easy situation. You're down early, in the elements, you're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. Wentz now on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Back to the air on second down. Wentz. This ball complete to Rager. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Working from the gun, Wentz. This short throw caught by Goddard. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. It helped force the incompletion. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. Rager catches it left side. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. 
Now, once again, that's to Fulgham complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 42. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Side, it's complete. He's got it. Now he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 22. Second half will start with a run by Sanders. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. They'll go again with Sanders. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Complete. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. <laughs> Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Returning it is Moore. So a solid punt, but also a nice return there of 14 yards. 
Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Yeah, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 37. Out of the gun, he'll throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. A give to Hyde out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. On third down, Wilson eluding the pressure right. He may try and run for this. The decision to take and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting this sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short gain. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the second time. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over a first and 10. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 24. Wentz. This short throw caught by Goddard. And he's able to get up here to the 26. That catch good for only a couple. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Wentz now to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. <laughs> to throw, it's Wentz. Open man, it's Rager, he's got it. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Wentz on target to Rager, first down Eagles. For many people, that's not your standard play call in that third down situation. But for so many offenses, they just want the ball in the hands of their playmakers in open space. And after he caught it, he did a nice job picking up the first down. Go, 
On first and 10, it's Sanders. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Another run with Sanders. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to them and go play action, but other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. And that is incomplete. And that one off the mark, a little late with a throw. Here's Cameron Johnston now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Now a run with Hyde, and he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? The second down attempt there, knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and it's incomplete. Will Disley, the intended receiver, and that takes us from second to third down. You got to give some credit there, able to hop up in the air and bat that one away, and that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and get some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. From the gun on third down, Wilson. He finds his running back, Hyde. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. No surprise they decided to throw on third down. A little bit of a surprise that they completed the pass and lost yardage on the play. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Throwing on first is Wentz. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, they've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Flush to his right, and, he's, and the ball is knocked out. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense gotten it, they were already within the shadow of the goalpost. And then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you've got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position.
So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. From the gun, it's Wins. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. Bobby Wagner, the former second-rounder out of Utah State with a sack. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. That they can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he's able to get it out quickly, and this is not a bad kick here. Good coverage there holds him to just a two-yard return following a punt of 44. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes you get all those big guys down there in one spot, and there's just nowhere to go. And in this case, the defensive tackle used his strength and swallowed him up. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. From the shotgun, Wilson. That one going to be complete to David Moore. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 12 yards there and a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. First down, a run with Hyde. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Again, it's high. And he's going to take this close to the first down marker as he stopped at the Eagles 27. Seven yards there at a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. They run with Hyde. He's been the bell cow tonight. Down right around the 25. The pro bowler Fletcher Cox there to get him down. What an advantage having an elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. On second down, high. Oh, looting the tackle. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. <laughs> to throw is Wilson from the gun on third down. He looks underneath and he finds Hyde. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. 
We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. On first and 10, it's Wilson. That's complete right around the eight. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. A gain of seven that time, second goal. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. And back to the ground, Hyde. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. But a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. So a little extra time to ponder this third and goal as we played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. The ball mere inches from the right line on third and goal. They run it again with Hyde. And he will not be denied. Into the end zone. Touchdown Seahawks. Carlos Hyde. His second touchdown of the night. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. Now Myers for the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by a Carlos Hyde touchdown run. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 23. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. And he'll complete this one to Fulgham. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 10 yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. Buying time to his left. 
And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. You got you got Shotgun now for Wentz. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Wentz again here on second and 10. That'll be caught, Rager with it. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's gonna be made at the Seahawks 29 yard line. 23 yards the pick up there. Well, this game was decided a while ago and that completion there, it's gonna artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. Wentz going to throw. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Again, it's Wentz. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Miles Sanders out of the backfield, and it's third down. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Wentz to throw again. Catch made by Fulgham. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, Wentz. Now he's got it, and he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. The Eagle passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. score closer well, I'd have to say that for him that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point but his legs that finished the deal give him credit for making it happen
the extra point, Jake Elliott. And this is up and good. That'll make it a score now of 24 to 10. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Takes this about five yards deep, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. And out now come the Seahawks. If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all but put things to bed. and the Seahawks take over now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They start the drive with high. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Here's a second and two now from the 33. They'll keep it on the ground. High. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. He's definitely one of the best defensive tackles in the game. He's been a pro bowler the last five years running. When you run against Fletcher Cox, good luck. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run it. Here's Hyde. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, a give to Hyde. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Looked to me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield, and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And he gets this only to the 44-yard line, not near enough to keep the drive alive. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on it. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. 
You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. Coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. They start on the ground here at Sanders. And he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six yard line. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. Well, both teams practice this situation. And this time, the guys on offense won and in a very nice way. What a run from that position on their own goal line. Gave him some good breathing room. I wonder now, do you still stack the line of scrimmage or do you play normal defense? They may have backed him off with that run. This left side caught by Fulgham. And they'll get him down up past the 15. 12 yards there and a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Now wins. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. In the early days of the NFL, you could easily blame these drops on maybe some uneven or uncertain lighting in a stadium. Not anymore. The lights are pretty good. Yeah, they're great here at night, but his second drop indeed, not a good look. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Again, they'll throw with wins. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And his bid for the first down coming up short as he's tackled at the 25. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. The Eagles indeed snap it. Wentz. And quickly finding Rager. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. The time to pull out the stops is now. And they convert there on fourth down. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Wentz connecting with his tight end, Goddard. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Right there, 54, right there. Wentz on the draw leaves it for Sanders. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Good tackle there by Jaron Reed, the former second round pick out of Alabama. And that's why he was drafted but he's really shown an excellent ability to rush the passer as well. The eighth play of the drive coming up. 
It's third and three. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. That was a third and somewhat manageable now, not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. Now, after the false start, they need eight yards here on third down. Working from the gun, Wentz. Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 39. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Throwing now is Wentz. Dancing to his left. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Late in the game, defense trying to avoid a big play. He's able to work out of the passing game, turn it into a run, pick up the first, and stop the clock as well. And you know in this situation, everything is sped up. The intensity, the thinking, everyone's movement. But for a quarterback, he has to continue to be what we call a flatliner. Level in everything he does and read the clock, feel it in the pocket, and go at the appropriate time. Well, here's a first down throw. It's complete. A gain of six there on first. They'll bring out four receivers, three of them being sent to the left, one to the right, second and four. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On the draw, here's Sanders. And he stopped immediately there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Early down stuffs to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. To throw is Wentz. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> He's got it, and it's 24-17. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. To the touchdown. Here's Elliott on to kick it away. Taken in the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. 
The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. Try to wind down some clock with Hyde. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. They'll keep it on the ground. Hyde, and he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. So following the run by Hyde, here's first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. So here we go, Charles, third down. Any chance you're throwing? I don't think so. I think you got to keep the clock rolling here. Clock counting down toward 40 seconds as they take the knee. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. A little juke. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say 24-hour cheesesteak shop. Here we come. Oh, yeah, and I'm buying, partner. <laughs> and guess what? I'm having mine with. And I'm having two if you're buying. Good night from Philadelphia.